Hi guys, just before we start the episode today, whatever platform you are listening to this on, whether it be on the podcast, uh, Apple podcast, YouTube, whatever it is, please support it. Please like, subscribe, whatever you can do. We want to reach as many people as possible. So please do that and we'll get right into the episode. Welcome to another episode of the Chronic Comeback Podcast. Today, I am really excited to have on the show Phoebe Kidson. Phoebe is an integrative health practitioner who specializes in helping those with chronic illnesses get back their health and vitality. During her own personal journey with chronic fatigue syndrome and Lyme disease, she saw how, how so many people with chronic illnesses spend years trying to get the right help this is why she decided to train as an integrative health practitioner to help shorten other people's journey back to full, vibrant health. She now helps patient, patients get to the root cause of what is causing their symptoms and shows them the way that they can restore their health. Phoebe has the unique perspective of being on both sides of the treatment table, the patient and the practitioner. And so I am really excited to have her on to tell her story. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me, Phil. I think it's and what you're doing that success stories are crucial to getting people well that they have to believe it's possible definitely definitely thank you and uh for those who are watching phoebe just warned me that her cat might walk through the <laughs> shot um I, i've said that i would quite like that so if that happens then you know I'm, i welcome that <laughs> day. <laughs> cool well um if we could go back to so i i i, I read a uh, as much as I could about your story, but there's not loads around your specific story. So I'm really excited to hear uh, you know, about that. So if we could go back to before you had any sort of health issues, like what, what was life like, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a youngster, um, were you, were you a healthy child? Um, you know, did you have a healthy childhood or was there, were there always kind of issues? I was absolutely fit and healthy it's so many things all the time, like extracurricularly, sport, music, drama, not an issue with my health whatsoever. Nothing I had to think about. And yeah, lived life to the absolute max. And that was my childhood. And um, I went on to train as an actor and a musician. And that was great. Again, tense. It wasn't like a, a normal university degree it was it was drama school so you were in there every day nine till six days nine till nine uh, doing physical stuff and it was great intense and then I, I was training for a triathlon around that and going out for cycles and swims at like 9 p.m every night yeah that was my life um and then after that I, I actually decided I wanted to do music every single day so um, I trained as a musician in the Royal Marines Band Service and the Royal Marines uh, are the military. And so I was a musician training for them. And again, that was high intensity job. We were training for a while down at the Commando Training Centre in Limston and doing assault courses and um out in the field so you'd be being at night and really sleep deprived and carrying loads of weight and I was I, I, won, I won like an award for being the fittest female and things so yeah I was very very fit and healthy before I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you sound like the type of person that pushes yourself in 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 your oh, absolutely in your yeah a absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, there's a bit of a common theme here for for a lot of the guests that I have on, and you know myself as well. Um, and so, what, could you take us through the first part of like any sort of health challenges you had? What 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 first started happening, and could you take us through the first part of that story? Yeah, so the first kind of thing that happened to me was I got a severe kidney infection, and that put me in hospital for a week because it started going into my bloodstream. And after that, um, I went back to work because all my blood tests were coming back fine. But I hadn't recovered physically at all. I was still incredibly weak and fatigued and my brain quite wasn't there. Uh, so 
I was going into work, not doing any work. I'd literally go into work every day and, and lie on the floor and then come home. That was all I was able to do at that point. And it got better. It did over time. That four, four or five months later, I was back to being able to do bits of sport and, and going to work properly. And then all of a sudden, I just absolutely crashed. Uh, it was in the, within the space of about two weeks. I went from being able to do things to um, all that. I do a huge amount of walking at weekends and things, and we went out on our, our normal day trek. Stopped for a, a coffee in the morning, and I remember distinctly standing up after that, thinking, "Hey, we can't carry on with this the rest of the day." But hey, I don't know how I'm going to get home. Nothing was working. The mental communicating. And that was that was one moment in those two weeks. And then later on, um, I remember I was meant to be having a violin lesson and I'd gone in to see my instructor and I couldn't physically pick up my violin. I was in that much pain and all my muscles were in agony, my joints. Um, yeah, my, my brain wasn't functioning. I had very poor, poor cognitive ability fatigue through the roof uh little things like uh completely isolated that you wouldn't know as well that like, I had pain in my feet whenever I walked and then like my left wrist was agony and I, I'd, I'd strapped it up thinking oh I must have sprained it and but I couldn't hold a plate in that hand and it's just so many different things that you would never connect but because it had all happened really, really quickly in one go, then I do think that was a good thing for me because I went from being super fit and healthy to incredibly not so in a very short space of time. So I knew something had gone wrong massively. And, uh, and, and sorry, did you say that was in, in within two weeks? That really severe deterioration, yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, and what what was your, what were your like initial, did you go to like a medical doctor straight away? Yeah. So um, obviously being, being in the military at that point, you have to be fit to work. And so they have on site medical teams and doctors and stuff. So when I obviously was in not a good way like that, they, I went to the doctor and um, he, he took one look at what was going on with me and said, I think you've got fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I'm going to get all these tests done in the meantime, sign you off work for a couple of weeks and um, I'll refer you to a rheumatologist, an endocrinologist. But it's probably just going to be something you're going to have to live with. That was what I was told. And yeah. Oh, that, 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 that's well. I, I was told that as well uh, by a couple of doctors. Um, and I just think that is one of the, worst things you can say to someone um and what were your because i've got really angry when people well it made me go ah what's yeah. happening yeah i was like six six months ago before the infection and everything i was fine and yeah. now i'm not something i knew something had come wrong and something had to come wrong and i knew that i was going to get to the bottom of it I, I wasn't someone to rest on my laurels and be like no chance no, no. chance no way. Um, and so was your, were your initial thoughts was I need another opinion or I need to maybe go away from like the medical side of things? What were your initial thoughts? Yeah, well, it became very obvious. Nothing they could do for me on the, well, the normal NHS route, unfortunately. Yeah. You, you've seen a rheumatologist, they've gone, yeah, you've got chronic syndrome and, and fibro and yeah, you can try. I, I was trialled on... Um, um, amitriptyline to help numb the senses of, of my um, muscles and, and help. Um, rather than at that point, I wasn't suffering any any form of depression or anxiety at all. Then um, that was purely just to help the pain, and I found that that didn't make any difference. And it was I was already getting a lot of gut issues at this point as well due to everything, and that increased it I noticed so stopped and went to a functional medicine practitioner instead wow that, that that's quite um it's quite a quick decision that you that you made there because I, I um I, like how soon 
after uh, like how, yeah how soon was it after you'd first had this the onset of the symptoms that you were seeing a functional practitioner well I was very fortunate a girl I went to school with um has chronic fatigue and Lyme disease and so I was aware of those things because because of her and her telling her story right. that massively sped things up for me because I was like oh I have some of those symptoms maybe I should go and get tested for Lyme disease and realized that testing on the NHS isn't always accurate for Lyme disease that's when I then went to see a functional medicine practitioner yeah mm. uh, uh, so uh, out of interest uh so when, when was this sorry by the way um 2016 that was yeah 2016 okay so yeah th- uh, thing was, things were a little bit more I guess progressed in the UK about Lyme disease by by then I guess as in the I, I remember when I first started looking at it in 2014 um it didn't feel like I mean I guess it was only two years before but it really didn't feel like there was anyone who no. didn't think about Lyme disease no and again like no one no one around me at that point apart from uh, knew about it or anything and, and, and I was in the military so we we'd have been trained about and stuff and things but no um uh there was a girl in in my group that had a tick bite when we were there and got it removed we weren't told about the risks it, it could it could have yeah and, and and so with this functional practitioner what what would what was there did they kind of just hear about your symptoms and think we need to test you for Lyme disease and then yeah what happened there so I was tested for Lyme disease um I had loads of other tests done like my mitochondrial status um tests organic acid tests um, heavy metal tests uh nutritional deficiency so I, I pretty much wanted to go out what was going on and um I had the tests done and came back with a whole host of things including Lyme disease and then um they that protocol for me which was antibiotics and I didn't want to take um to avoid as much as possible taking antibiotics and it affecting my gut. So I had intramuscular um, antibiotic injections for three months. And then I went on a course of doxycycline for another three months after that. And it also at that time was having mitochondrial supplements and things like support my liver. So a really, really good protocol, um, especially said so quickly after going on well I was very fortunate in that case to on the ball so quick with it all yeah and and so who did you get out of interest who was your testing done with it in the UK or was it um yes yeah, so so I went through Brexit Medical at the time then ah, and, they, and yeah. they they sent all my tests off yeah, okay yeah yeah America or Germany where yeah. it was needed yeah got you got you um and so how, how did you respond to that the, that this initial treatment okay um, it was slow. Um, well, like when I first started having the um, antibiotic injections, the nurse was, I didn't think I'd be able to complete the course because of how poorly I was. She wasn't sure I'd, I'd make it back in. Um, but I did improve like towards the end. She told me that. She's like, I never thought you'd be able to, you were so poorly. Um, so I was improving. It was, it was slow. Uh, I wasn't, anywhere near where it was but is that I'd gone from like not being able to look look after myself or cook or anything being able to do things like cook again and and I started doing some studying and I was able to do bits and bobs but not not back to how I was by any means uh that that went on for a while and and as I said I was improving and then um I completely crashed I reached a whole other level of yeah, <laughs> not fun time. Wow. Um, yeah. And again, after you've, you've worked so hard and you're doing everything right, you're doing the saunas, you're doing the meditating, you're doing the supplements, you're doing the eye skin brushing, you're doing everything right, then it, what, like below rock bottom is, yeah, it's goal destroying. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 after how uh, like so you after the first uh, like onset of symptoms, how soon did you have this second crash? 
Uh, so that would have been two years. Two years. So you'd been slowly, slowly, well, you thought improving up until that point. And then the the rug was taken beneath you and you just, were you, did you felt you feel worse than ever or just? Back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get new symptoms I'd never even had before. Wow. Um, I was unable to leave the house for 16 months at one point. <sighs> Um, literally didn't went out for like two doctor appointment outside my front door, but anything beyond that. Uh, my cognitive function was the worst thing. Any sensory stimuli just made my body go into shock. Uh, it couldn't take in like a vehicle moving would have been too much to send off and um, sensitivity to sound, light. Um, yeah, things like had to be kept in the same place in the house so I knew where they were because my brain couldn't register anything else there. I couldn't look at my phone like once a day, couldn't speak to people, um, read, no, computers, no. Yeah, not much fun. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that, that, um, so it sounds like your nervous system was completely on on the edge, really, yeah. with all of that sensitivity. Um what what was the, the the practitioner you were dealing with at that point, um, Breakspear? What what were they saying about this? Like, why did they think that this had happened? And um, they were trying all kinds of things for me. So at the moment, at that point, I was still on Lyme disease protocol. I was on a herbal protocol then, and then um, we we were testing me for mold, and um, I was then on treatment for that. And um, it got to the point where my health was only getting worse unfortunately and as I said they'd been brilliant and I, I had was improving with them for a long time but then at that point um it, it just wasn't working anymore yeah okay um and so what was the where did you go from that point like who did you go and see there I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't. Oh. I had to trust my intuition at that point I I knew that I had nothing to lose and it had to get to that point for me to trust myself and, and everything I'd be learning because we're, we're brought up, aren't we, to trust the doctors and they know best and that's ingrained in us. And as I said, I had nothing to lose at this point. So everything I'd learned, I decided to just have a go at and see what happened. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, it paid off. It was a massive risk, but it, it's paid off. So, I'm, 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 Well, don't jump, don't, don't jump to the end like you... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the end. Bye. There was, there was really, you know, you've gone through a lot of crap there, and then you, you know, you've, you've obviously, you know, you've done a lot of work yourself. What were the things you said? You know, you've learned a lot yourself. And you want to take a risk and do it yourself. What were the things that you, the main things you wanted to change? What were the main changes you made? So, again, it was just turning, looking at everything from a completely different angle. So instead of going, um, my mitochondria is suffering give it some supplements to support the mitochondria I was looking at well hang on why is it suffering in the first place what is causing it to go wrong it was getting to the root cause of what was going wrong and often yes that can be things like lime and parasites and, and bacteria and heavy metal and mold but sometimes it can even still be further upstream than that and that was the case for me and I also learned specific order things need to be done in there's no point killing off the bacteria or detoxifying if there's no effort to go uh, so do, so do you mean is in if there's no the detox pathways aren't clear is that what you mean so drainage drainage before detox always okay and, so, and when, so when you oh sorry can you explain what you mean there? absolutely so your drainage pathways are things like your colon, your liver, your kidneys, your lymphatic system, the skin, and making sure those are open and working optimally. For you, because yes, I, I'd had blood tests come back today, my kidneys and liver were fine, but everyone needs something different. And they might have been just within range for the vast majority of the population. Mm. But for me, they weren't functioning optimally enough to get rid of all the lime that was being killed off and so yeah. therefore protocols were just making me sicker and sicker because 
I was having all this off inside my body, but it had nowhere to go. That that actually makes so much sense as well, doesn't it? Um, when when you yeah. think about it, um, <laughs> and what are the? Because I kept thinking it was a hurt reaction. I kept thinking, oh, I just got to get through these three weeks. It'll be fine. People always say that you're meant to have a die off reaction. It's a good sign. It's working. But I've learned now that if if a couple of days, two maybe, maybe five days max for for a die off reaction. Any longer than that, and something's going wrong. Yeah, yeah. And and so, what are the ways in which you can? Because um, the protocol I'm on right now is is doing what you're you're talking about. Um, is, you, is it stuff like you, you know uh, actual like supplements to support your liver, um, like uh, enemas, uh, sauna stuff like that, or is there a lot more than that? So it's absolutely different for each person. But yes, some people enemas might be absolutely brilliant for them other people it might not be and again like with the kidneys for example so many well all of, all of the organs there's so many brilliant homeopathic supplements herbal supplements nutritional supplements that can really help as well as as you can do at home for free well that i'm all for trying to make things as cheap as possible is, oh, being ill is expensive <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and yes okay going to see um have, having a, a lymphatic massage a practitioner could be brilliant and, and will help you but it's not possible especially for people that are homebound housebound you get into this vicious cycle and you think well how, how am I going to get better when I can't go and see that practitioner or someone saying oh move your lymphatic system go on a rebounder like, I can't do that so there's so much that can be done at home, like, um, individual massage techniques and things to support your lymphatic system. Again, in, in the right order, there's no point, um, for example, massaging the, the lymph nodes in your groin if you, you haven't got your kidneys opening because you need to get your kidneys working, get all the lymph out. Yeah. So yeah, that's where the order, the order comes in. How would you get your kid? How would you get your kidneys working then? Oh, there's, some, there's some brilliant ways again with with supplements and herbs and homeopathics. And then also through diet is another great way you can do as well. That kidneys love like fruit and, and raw uh, vegetables and things and, and, and loads of fruits and uh, again not really heavy on the protein. But it's, it's got to be done specifically that someone everyone needs something different food wise some people they might work really really well on a keto diet or a paleo diet other people a raw vegan diet would be the best thing for them yeah. and it's, it's whatever you, that's another thing that i've learned is completely everything has to be bio individual yeah a hundred percent saying someone cold showers for example that's something else people say i would do for the lymphatic system it can be brilliant for some people yeah but other people, let's say if you've got, um, I don't know if you know much about Ayurveda at all. Yeah, I, I actually went and did a Panchakarma. Uh, have you heard of that? It's like, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went and did that in, in India. Oh, crazy, wow. Crazy, crazy experience. That was brilliant. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> it was a very, it was, it was in a very like remote part of India and it was just quite uncomfortable. Um, oh. So, yeah, it was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I think I was just desperate and I was wanting to do anything, but um, and that's just a, another story for another time. But it, oh, I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I didn't really understand. I didn't really understand it. It was um, so I'd been doing this meditation, like Vedic meditation, and um, uh, this the the main guy that was teaching it told me about this panch karma because I told him about the problems I'd been having, and a lot of it panch karma is around completely detoxifying your body. And I went there and um, I just turned up in this random place in the middle of in India. And like the first night in my room, there was like mice in my room. Um, and uh, that, do you know what I mean? That was just like, I was just so out of my comfort zone. And then every day you have these massages by these like two guys that were massaging me every day. It was very strange. It was very strange. I probably should be saying this on a YouTube <laughs> channel, uh, but then it's all around, but then you have these enemas and all of this time, these massages, which I believe would be working on your lymphatic system or, or whatever. 
is is trying to get you to get rid of all these toxins. But kind of all that really happened for me over the course of that week was uh, the three weeks. I just lost loads of weight and um, I didn't feel any better. And I got back. I was pasty white considering and uh, I just was really thin. So people just looked, thought I came back and people just thought I looked more sick than ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my strange story in India. <laughs> oh, but no, it's an experience. It's an experience. <laughs> you get it. Uh, anyway, hijacked your story. Sorry. I, 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 um, I edit that out, but no. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> cold showers. Yeah, um, yeah. You said Ayurveda. Yeah, yeah. So if like for the, with a someone with a vata body type, which they tend to be have, have less fat on them, maybe taller and skinnier and uh, much more air, so they're more likely to get distracted and artistic. Cold showers, for example, for them could have the complete opposite effect and send their nervous system into a shock state because they don't have those additional reserves that some of the other body types do. So, yeah, it's, especially with the whole social media world where people are going, oh, this is the solution, everything. It's different for each person. How do you, so when you work with someone, and we'll go back into the end of your story soon, and, but like, how do you assess what's right for that particular person? Is it trial and error? Um, no, because people's health is too important for that. Right. It's, these are serious conditions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do an incredibly thorough um, take with them and spend at least an hour and a half with them talking and running if we need to run additional functional medicine tests. Yeah. And also uh, a huge amount of um, the, uh, what, what I to call them like quizzes and things and forms that I get them to fill in, which assess different types of their body or their brain and different things that could be going wrong that might be specific to them so for example some people with chronic fatigue syndrome um might have um the Stanley syndrome which is, is genetic and so you need to and that's characterized by having um hypermobile things so it's picking up on different clues basically like a detective yeah yeah no definitely it's, it definitely sounds like you are um and okay well going back into your story like how long from when you first started working on yourself did you did you uh did you start actually seeing um so pretty instantly actually i'd gone from yeah, not being able to leave the house to um about three months into like making sure my drainage pathways were completely open um being able to go out in the wheelchair we went actually on that note wheelchairs phenomenal if you're struggling right now and you are struggling to get out and about and you don't want to get a wheelchair do it. it took me a, well for a, for a long time there was no point in me even getting a wheelchair because I couldn't leave the house but then when I was able to it provided so much joy and opened so many possibilities to me that, yeah it was it was one of a really really good decision and it was hard but I knew it was just a stepping stone Get me to where I wanted to be, and mm. yeah. quit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at what? So you know, so yeah, I was going out the house then, and just like just to the local park, and I just sit there for a little bit, and then um, over time, that things got better and better and better. Um, other things that were crucial was um, addressing limbic system dysfunction. So um, that is where a part of your brain has switched due to trauma and causes it not to function as optimally as it should. Now, trauma, people often think of as a car accident or a death of a loved one. It can also be an infection, whether a bacteria, a virus, that can still cause part of the brain the limbic system to be damaged and once that's damaged that then means your brain the hpa axis in your body can't send signals from your brain to your adrenal glands properly 
if that isn't firing as it should, the rest of these systems in your body aren't, aren't going to be working properly. Yeah. And, and is, uh, just to confirm this, because I think it's really interesting you bring this up, but it just seems to me, I, I've had a lot of recovery stories on um, around brain retraining and like DNRS, the Gupta program, that that kind of stuff. Is that what you're referring to? Like, yeah, the- absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that's what they do. They re- retrain your brain and the programs are phenomenal because they are so specific. Mm. And when with people with limbic system dysfunction, simply meditating or CBT or counselling isn't going to cut it. It's got to be one of these designed programs where working at it intensely. It's not easy. That's the thing. You'll look at these recovery stories of people doing them. They're like, oh, I got better within a week or I got better within six months. I'm now living a great life. And and you kind of look at it and go, well, hey, that can't be true. (laughs) And actually what you don't realise is how much hard work these people have put in to get there. Yeah. You are fighting your own brain retrain your brain you're you, I, I swear it'd be easier to have a physical fight with someone than teach your brain what things it is thought is normal when yeah. it's not and so it's hard work the brain retraining thing. But they, for people where they do have limbic system dysfunction it can be the absolute key to not just getting them well but keeping them well yeah yeah i i really think it's for me, that's the thing for me. Um, I I keep saying this on every single episode. I'm just like because I know it takes such a, a commitment. I'm, uh, I'm 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 basically just about to start a program. Um, what what was the so what was the program you you did? I did dynamic neural retraining system by Annie Hopper. Yeah. Okay. And and, and would you say that was the the real uh, the real game changer? That was like the gasoline on the the recovery fire. Hey. The one, there's one other thing as well that made a difference I'll, I'll mention in a minute but, um, definitely without it it wouldn't have been possible wow okay um, and as well as a, with keeping you well that's the that's what they help with yeah because, um, because your body is so used to responding in a certain way to stimuli and things if you don't assess that I think that's why so many people have relapses. And and so you were, let's just, in, in terms of timeline, because I always think people, or well, I do anyway, I want to know kind of like how long the, these kind of things took. You, you, I definitely wasn't an overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely not. It was a lot of hard work for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things because you go such a long way from struggling to make a cup of tea to going out for runs that it's, so probably 18 months from that state to completely better i mean that's i mean that's that's i mean i'm sure anyone who's listening to this right now me included (laughs) well that's the thing it's not it's not like um in that time i hadn't got any improvement i was doing things all the time and building on it and building on it and then 18 months later i was working full time exercising as much as I want socializing also not having to do things that you need to do with these types of conditions like pace or rest literally those things I don't even think about now mm. if you're better you shouldn't be having to yeah manage the condition it there is no more condition anymore and how, how are you today like is, is there compared to how you were before um how how would you so say i'm a completely different person well, not completely different but i am a different person to how i am before yeah. um because it's been a life-changing experience mm. um i i could do anything i want to do now i'm not limited i choose to live life in a different way maybe because i find it more fun now instead of for example um used to do like back-to-back things all the time so in, on a Saturday I might see like four different people and rush around I'd much rather now go over to someone's house and have incredible fun quality time with them yeah. all day and just enjoy it and really just savor the moment and I, f- I find that more fun now than running around like headless chicken <laughs> I still do occasionally but <laughs> 
and you've obviously you're doing a completely different career now. So at what point did you make that decision? That was all along the minute that I, I kind of was told I'm gonna to have to live with this. Um and wasn't getting the help I needed. And also the people I met along my way that like I saw fantastic nutritionists and things, and they just inspired me so much. I was like, whoa, how incredible are you? <laughs> <laughs> I just it was so horrible not knowing where to turn or if I go see an acupuncturist or a homeopath or a reflexology. Uh, what, 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 where do I go? What do I do? Um, I, I just, I always say it kind of chose me. I didn't really have much say in the matter. Yeah. The, the, the universe conspired to, to put you where you are today. Uh, and yeah. And the other thing that, that really um, made a difference was um, everything being yeah, completely bio-individual. And like that goes back to supplements and um, things as well. Um, so I saw um, a form of applied kinesiology practitioner, um, a morphogenic field technique practitioner, and they test everything in real time for your body. It's all energetic frequency testing, and they use energy vials to test um, you against different parasites, viruses, toxins, mold, different things might be compromising your body test it for you in real time and then test solutions that are appropriate for you there and then so um for example with binders if you're detoxifying you'll need some type of binder but how do you know if chlorella is right for you or activated charcoal or do you need cell cause biotoxin binder or zeolite and again, how many times a day should you be taking this? And should you be taking it um, four capsules twice a day or once a day or just after you might have done an enema or having a protocol that is that specific, again, makes a difference. And also like, helps you get off what you need. Yeah. There's a huge amount of supplements I was on and you think, yeah, are they beneficial? But are they beneficial to me? So that, that made a difference and then meant that my protocol could be tailored completely to what I, what I needed there. And then, um, yeah, that, I just find the whole energy medicine thing, well, it's been a learning curve. I, I've been studying to become an MFD practitioner and just about to take my final exam and so excited because it, it, just, it just transforms everything and it makes it so much easier as well. You know what you were saying there about the, is it trial and error? Mm. it just takes out any of that because yeah. you can test in real time this is what the client body is wanting right now mm. it is amazing absolutely amazing <laughs> what, what would you say uh, i'd like to ask practitioners uh, when they come on this because i think you've got a unique perspective what would you say is like the one biggest blocker you see to people not recovering uh when when they when when you work with them or or slow at least slowing it down significantly uh openness to try things i think mm. we, i said earlier that we we want to trust the doctors and take a pill get it better and that's what we know um and like the whole energy medicine thing for a lot of people, that's just like, whoa, how, if you, if you can't understand it from a brain point of view, a lot of people won't try it. And it doesn't mean it doesn't work just because you can't understand necessarily how the quantum physics side of it works. Also, people have to be ready to try these things. I don't know about you, you might have heard about um, doing retraining two years ago. Mm didn't register for you because you thought that's not the case for me I've got these physical symptoms it can't be related and you counted it immediately everyone's got to be ready at their own time to do these things and that's, everyone's got to go on their own journey yeah it sucks because sometimes yes you can see you know what's going to help that person They'll come to it in their own time and that's that's fine they've got to go on their own journey yeah, definitely. Um, 
with the with the kinesiology so i've actually done some kinesiology with uh i actually went to america to do it uh, that's another story um, <laughs> you just like going traveling don't you <laughs> yeah well i like spending money that's for sure um with uh do you need to see because i actually went to see them in person and then we did a remote like muscle testing thing do you would would a kinesi would someone always need to see someone in person or can it done rem- be done remotely like initially so i never saw my mft practitioner in person really okay that's so interesting yeah. cool mm, that's very interesting mm. so it's just <laughs> it's, it is a whole different world and it took me such a long time to get my head around it yeah but, um glad i did i'm really glad i did yeah cool um so going back to like, your story like in and I, I guess giving other people advice at this time thinking about your darkest hours yeah probably that I, I assume that 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 relapse that you had where you sunk to another level there'll be people listening to this right now who can can it, that resonates with them so much because they're in in the yeah. thick of it at the moment what would be your advice to them at the moment like to in order for them to keep going and and keep moving forward just don't give up don't, no matter what these days can be so dark and horrible but it is possible mm. ways for, for so many people and that they are out there and um what we were discussing just before we came on that people that get better they want to forget those times they really do um they're so painful and therefore they put it behind them and they move on and they live their life and they get out of those circuits and often don't share their stories because it is so painful and they are out there though and people do get better all the time and keep listening to your podcast and hearing all these wonderful success stories yeah don't get don't don't ever give up hope no matter how unique you think your case is or how complex your symptoms are, there are other people out there that have got better through similar things. Yeah. Also be open to people and speak to people and let them know what you're struggling with. And and often because it is alternative medicine that we're, we're trying and your friends and your family might not understand, try them. I, I was reluctant for a while to speak about some of the things and I don't think once anyone actually shot me down. It was more in my head. I had, I had the issue with it, not them. Yeah. And so many times that I'd speak to a friend and be like, um, because I told her during training, um, knew what I was going through. And then if I was having a really bad day, I'd ring them up and go, I'm never going to get better. I can't do this. And you'd be like, hang on, you retrained your brain to do this. You can now do this. Shut up. <laughs> Believe in yourself again. Yeah. And your support network doesn't have to be your friend, it doesn't have to be your family. It can be a practitioner or a counselor or even someone you met on social media two weeks ago. Yeah. Sometimes speaking to people that you aren't as close to can, can be helpful as well. And again, can connect with different people you you might not know yeah you you mentioned earlier that you're a completely different person now um not completely but <laughs> no but uh, yeah I, I got what you mean I got what you mean um what what are the ways in which your life now is is better as a result of what you've been through it's, it's so different like so many people say oh I'm so glad went through what I went through it means that I'm now the person I am today I wish I didn't have to go through that I, no, honestly it was horrible and I wouldn't want anyone else to go through it ever and it does it does leave scars and stuff it's important it is important to move on and I think I now have incredible way more gratitude for my body for one um the way I used to treat it I just now think well why that's not necessary that look what you can do it's amazing and I so way more gratitude for my body and my friends and my family and and time for them as well when before I think I was much more me focused when now just being able to well people in COVID have suddenly realized how how important it is not being able to see people to be able to see people again it's 
it's, it's like that. And as I said, I'm so content just being around my loved ones and outside. I'm much calmer, something much calmer. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely well look, look thank you so much for for coming on and sharing sharing your story um it will i mean it gives me add to my belief for sure and i'm sure it will be adding belief to anyone who's listening to this right now that they can get through you know the tough times that they're going through so um if someone wants to connect with you um uh, maybe ask you any questions around any of the things you've said that today uh, you brought up today would would that be okay and if so how would yeah, they absolutely that? yeah and that's why I was saying about never give up hope because mm. there are people out there and more than happy to yeah, at any point just to raise your spirits and it is possible absolutely possible um so yeah my my website is integrative natural health.co.uk uh kids in integrative health practitioner and Instagram is Phoebe underscore integrative health. Awesome. We'll we'll include that in the show notes so people can people can see. Yeah, that. never, never, never give up hope. I think that's the most important thing that you will get better. It might take time and to find the right things for you. Is life on the other side? Awesome. That's a great that's a great note to leave it on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil. Take care.